It's a challenge to build a business and it's a challenge to raise a family and combining the two can lead to either disastrous failure or deep fulfillment. Those are the words of uh, my guest here, David Irvin, and we've caught up to him in his uh, home here in southern Alberta. Thanks for taking a few moments to visit with us. You're very welcome, Kevin. So you have identified six key areas for building a cohesive, sustaining, respectful, and fulfilling family business. We won't get to all of them, but let's talk about a couple of them. And the first one is governance. Why is that the first one? Well, governance is the foundation of your family. And most people, most, I'll tell you this, most successful businesses have governance, whether they even recognize it or not. Ooh. So all I'm doing is shining a light on what people are doing right. Essentially, in any family business, there are three circles. And this, gets, this is very, very important um, for the succession of a family business. You have one circle which are the owners, people who own, who have shares in the business. Another circle is your uh, people who work in the business. And then another circle is the family members. And every one of those three groups, now there's obviously overlap and there's also areas within those circles that don't overlap. Every one of those three circles has to be taken care of. There's gotta be goals. The owners have goals where they meet and they have to have a process. How do the owners make sure their goals get met? Then the people who operate the business need to have a set of goals. Mm -hmm. How are we gonna communicate and work toward our goals? But then the family, which is what we call a family council, we need to meet as a family and say, how do we make sure that we take care of the interests of our family? And how does the business support that? Now that's not something that we talked about in the previous generation. We just worked hard, we didn't talk to each other. But today the world is so much more complex that we have to make sure that those three circles get their interests met. And there has to be a set of goals to be get really clear on where each, of those where each of those circles are headed. Now the second key you have here is holistic leadership. You say it's critical to know what each family member values, how the business can be used as a tool to create what matters most to each family member. So this comes down to a critical decision or definition of the family. Are we a family first business or are we a business first family? What's your thought on that? I think the family has to decide that. I have a bias that the business is a tool to create what the family wants. Hmm. That's my bias. And we don't get a lot of training in how to communicate with each other. We get training in production. Pr production in this, in this country is not a shortage is not a weak link in agriculture. It's how do we talk to each other? So to get the family together and to organize the family to come together and say, what do we all really want? What are our goals? And how can the business support the family? Because frankly, the family is going to outlive the business. What are we in business for? This is what I ask farm families. This is what I ask any business. Why are you in business? Now don't give me your mission statement. Give me your personal statement. What's the purpose of the business in your life? Ask yourself. Any, by the way, anybody that works in business, what's the purpose of going to work? Mm -hmm. If it's not to improve our quality of life. The problem is, you see, the challenge today is that most of us are driven by production and then we squeeze a quality of life into our production. We work for 20, 30 years in our life and say, where's the quality of my life? because now the business runs my life. Because we haven't worked on our business, we've worked in our business, yeah. and then the business takes over, and we have no more quality of life. My premise is, let's start with a quality of life goal first. That's what a holistic goal is. Let's decide, what kind of quality of life do we want? What do we want to leave our kids? What kind of, how much time off do we need? Yeah. Uh, what are our long-term goals for us personally? Mm -hmm. What do we want for our grandkids? What, how hard do we want to work? And then we talk about our, and what kind of health do we want to have? I have about eight areas that I talk about. What kind of, what that would be involved in a quality of life? What, how do we want our marriage to be? Um, and then we set the goal of how, once we're clear on our quality of life, then we can say, where's the business fit into that? How much do we need to produce? What do we need to produce that will support our quality of life? And I teach this not just to farmers, I teach this everywhere I go. Let's start with a quality of life goal first yeah. and then talk about how the business fits into it. And it's quite opposite 
Because what we tend to do, it's easy to talk about the business. Let's that's, that's, that's produce, right? Yeah. And then 10 years later, we wonder, well, where's our family? We're going through a divorce and we've lost our kids yeah. because we didn't address that goal early on.